Frog Days is an explorational adventure game that got puked on by the late 90s. Like the type of adventure game where you point and click stuff. Remember when people referred to them as adventure games? I mainly remember something about convoluted puzzles that I never bothered figuring out past the one minute mark. But don't worry, this game features virtually none of those, because it's explorational and unfinished. The archive.org page claims that it's 99% finished. That's also the only place where you can get this game at the moment. If you're the type that's interested in those wondrous but awkward 90s renders, or enjoyed Hypnospace Outlaw, then I recommend checking it out for yourself first. The game doesn't have some crazy twists like Undertale or anything. Well, kind of. It's more that it works best when you explore things for yourself before digging deeper into it. Since you're still here, I'll give you a rough idea of my initial impressions. When I first jumped into this, I was almost immediately overwhelmed. There's just a spam of posters and stuff everywhere in the starting room. Including a poster of this guy, whom I'll refer to as Frank. Some long horse reject, a UFO stealing a burger that goes really hard, and more random things. Exploring the starting room, I found what appeared to be an unenterable bathroom and a piece of paper attached to a door telling the player to go through it when you're ready. As I was starting to get adjusted to the environment, I sat down at the computer, read through the printed paper, which reads like one of those purchase a piece of a planet scams. Then I turned on the computer and there was yet another spam of random shit. I was attempting to figure out what's happening on the desktop, trying to read random texts as noises keep piling up. Fucking leaks, error messages, dancing sevens! And then I found solace in the taxi world. Those were my first impressions of this game. I didn't know what to make of it. I was frankly not enjoying the spam of stuff at first. But as I finally got a chance to catch my breath, the game's charm started to show. If you're one of the 2% that actually played the game before watching, I don't blame you if you quit within the first 5 minutes. Before we continue forward, let me set up the Scorkler. I have a feeling I'll need it. Hey, you didn't pay your fare! So, I explored the taxi world. A canvas can be found that uses a cursor as a paintbrush. Pretty clever. I walked through a bunch of stretched out tower viewers and then ran into a usable one. Inserting cash into it will allow you to actually use it, and then warp into the beach section of this world. You'll find what you'd expect to find on a regular old beach, like broken down bumper cars, crashed ships, and an enterable lighthouse. On the other hand, that last part is unrealistic. Since I felt like I saw everything there is to see, I then returned to the desktop through a rabbit ear thing. Oh right, sorry I'm desensitized to the wacky UI of this game. But these menus do require some explanation. Like, I don't know if the spelled out words are meant to be earwax or cheese. Which one would be more disturbing, I wonder? The inventory screen is also a brain menu of some kind. Cause technically all this is in your head? Speculating a little early. It also gives you the option to talk, which doesn't seem to really do much of anything. The various switches here represent the options menu, which looks like a toy for toddlers. Anyway, I exited through the rabbit's ears, explored the desktop for a bit, and then I entered the ice cream I had dropped. We are going to have ants, which takes place in some neighborhood. Quite surreal scenery for a neighborhood, by the way. A carton of eggs casually sitting on the street, a bunch of grass poking out, a tree stump dead smack on the road, and some sort of gum collage under a skate deck. When I reach the spilled ice cream, I get scammed by some ant. It's a dog eating other dog's ice cream world out there, you know? Got a problem with it? Then go away and stop bothering me. You can get back at the little scammer, though, by attempting to steal the ice cream. As he'll get progressively angrier and angrier and then uh, loop his dialogue. Ooh, that's it. Now I'm angry. Next, I warp into a flower. Hope, Hope you're not you're allergic. allergic! I descend from Lego bricks all the way to said flower. The surface of the flower is full of water droplets, a few trees, and some lampposts. 
ran into a radio with some banger radio station intros. Don't touch that dial. Or you'll end up like this guy. After which I did a seemingly pointless minigame where you plant flowers or not flowers. Found this frog, which I'm sure isn't important, and then a house. I entered the house where an absolute banger comes on. And I found a bunch of sentient kitchen utensils. Inside the house, I found a cake decoration minigame, where I drew... well... Moving on, the next world can be reached by giving a bone to a dog on the desktop. You really just click on the bone in this menu. Discover wonders at the museum! Entering the world, I first spot some destroyed vehicle, and then I'm greeted by a desolate building with a large entrance. Entering the museum, I immediately spot some dinosaur bones. Also, the interior of this thing is in much better shape, apparently. Going to the left, I ended up in some room full of priceless artifacts that appeared to have been stolen and vandalized. After which, I stumbled into an art gallery, which features things such as Corkboard and Wire by Vincent Van Garbage. This fucking creepy chicken wing baby thing, or whatever that is. Blood Games by Jack McThompson. A note about removed art. So much for artistic freedom. Nothing's Right, Nothing's Left by Martha Bland. Uh, Pipes. And I tried to remove the pizza off the statue's cock, alright? I tried doing it multiple times, too. <sighs> I think I get why the museum is called Land of the Large Lizards now. Or I just have a dirty mind and it refers to the dinosaur bones. That, that's probably more likely. So anyway, when I went back to the desktop, I started messing around with this music player. Can the guy get some sleep around here? I heard a funny joke. Sheesh, you, you know, all these file formats, it, it's hard to keep track of uh, which one's which, you know? You got .txt, .bmp. How about a... Uh, Dot let me see what that file is. <laughs> and then, out of nowhere, a UFO rudely parked on my music player. So of course I went inside. Inside the UFO, there's a bunch of funny tubes and plants that emit a strong glow. Interacting with this wacky TV starts a minigame that I didn't bother with figuring out. Nor that. But I later came back to it and beat the entire game. It's pretty simple. It's one of those Candy Crush-like games. Did I just fucking say that? As an apology, here's some Gooseketti. The other thing I found on the ship were pictures of some fat- I mean thick, I mean... Of a frog alien. Oh boy, the Squarkler didn't trigger yet, really? The next world I stumbled into was Birthday Land. <laughs> Smells, Smells of, of pizza, pizza and cake. cake. Honestly, this is probably the least surreal area in the game. It also happens to feature the most interactions you can do. For example, when you reach the animatronic band, you can get them to play one of six songs. Selecting Maple Leaf Rag will get you a bonus cutscene. I hope y'all are enjoying the pizza. Man, let me tell you, I'm enjoying the pizza so much, you know I like extra bacon on mine. <laughs> okay. So I kind of just jammed out to the music for a while. But there's much more to do here. There are fully functional arcade games to be played. You get to hit these weirdos, you get to play one of these games for the hundredth time, and then there's the best game. Gives off strong flash game vibes. Or I guess Vampire Survivors is the more relevant term. I love the controls of the arcade cabinets themselves. Like the chicken one isn't afraid to acknowledge that you're on a PC. Therefore, it contains four giant WASD buttons. There's also the controls for that block breaker game, but we don't need to get into that. So for each of these games, you actually get tickets that then would be spent at the ticket shop. This part, however, isn't fully functional. Since you're in dev mode, the amount of tickets you carry is set to a specific amount each time you enter the shop. The shop itself features the typical gag gifts you'd expect to see like fake puke puddles and the like. Next, I went to i.cup. I see you pee. Come on. This world consists of five brains, each corresponding to a different sense. You know those random items I kept collecting so far? This is where you're supposed to use them. 
You can put anything that's arguably edible in the red brain, anything that should emit a scent in the yellow one, anything that emits sound in the blue one, yeah, I think you get it. Each brain plays into the whole five senses thing. They also each give dialogue when you put an item inside that I can barely understand. You are what you feel. You feel what you touch. What else can be found is a chalkboard that gives the player some hints on what to do, and a cassette tape that's sadly unfinished. So the next kooky area I found was the music world. Warping into the world, I was greeted with a grand piano. No, it isn't usable. I tried. But you can find a self-playing drum set. After which I ran into... Okay, I think that's enough of that. There's a lot more to explore, but I'll leave it up to you before I lose myself. So that's pretty much how the game works. You explore the strange desktop, solve puzzles sometimes, and enter surreal worlds. Feeling out of breath? A bit confused? Good, because now I'll be delving deeper into the game, and I'll try to sort this mess out. Don't know if that's possible, to be frank. Sorry, Frank, I wasn't talking to you. All right. When first accessing the computer, you get this wild-looking OS full of random clutter. The version of Flamingo OS here is special as it's able to access virtual worlds. Through exploration, you'd gather various items and run into random acts of vandalism. I believe this vandalism is just a red herring and doesn't really mean anything significant. Or at least it doesn't mean anything without further context. The items you discover are then to be used in the brain world as mentioned previously, in which you can find this ancient computer that's very easy to miss. I had no idea this thing was here until I saw the developer's gameplay. Each object carries a different value. You're meant to hit a certain amount of points to initiate the ending sequence organically. Instead, the game just crashes, making the game unbeatable without debug commands. When the ending sequence is initiated, you wake up back at the apartment. When getting back onto the computer, there's a ton of cockroaches on the desktop. Killing most of them will warp you into a city of some sort. Oh, there's that reference to that one joke. Then you eventually reached an overgrown software store. This is where you get a cure. Add roach cutscene here. And you enter system repair mode. None of the options work aside from restore to a previous state. And from here, only the user created option works, which takes place in 1999. Interesting fact, the description on archive.org states that the game takes place in 1995. So you're jumping into the future, I think? After the image is restored, you're facing a different computer with a sticky note attached to it, detailing a username and password. The desktop you're seeing on the monitor can actually be accessed in-game. You have to utilize debug commands though, or have to find some obscure item I don't really know about. Hey, it has some neat easter eggs, like a reference to Hypnospace, and some other dumb junk like this. Anyway, continuing on, you're now in a seemingly ordinary house. When going outside, there's a huge UFO presence, which is sucking up random stuff into the ship. Walking into it, you'll end up on the ship yourself. You'll eventually reach a... chair computer? With a bunch of frogs scattered around it. They speak gibberish, but it can actually be translated if you happen to find an item earlier in the game. Each frog expresses disappointment and hops away one by one. Afterwards, the alien you accesses the chair computer, which leads back to a very familiar screen from the start of the game. Writing in Adminer and WordPass will reveal the desktop. There's a bunch of inaccessible brains, a special message, and something called Network. The special message shows a video cutscene of an alien, which I found out later is named Astrofrog, who is trying to warn humans of impending doom, a real Y2K disaster. The end of human civilization will begin. 
on update January 1st, Earth year 2000. Starting up the network has a short sequence of some ultra internet type shit, and the game ends. Just like that. So then, at the very beginning of the game when you're logging in, I believe you're actually logging into the brain of an alien and then controlling them. More specifically, I believe you're this guy right here. Or at least another alien of that species. I got to this conclusion thanks to the ending sequence. When there's a strong red light shining from the computer, simply turn around to see the silhouette of who you're controlling. And yeah, there's also that reflection at the very end. Going back to that alternate desktop real quick, there is another recorded message that can be found on it. One detailing of how you're the last human remaining and that it's too late to do anything about it. I believe this is a hostile alien race that Astro Frog is trying to warn us about. Or maybe an alternative bad ending to the game? Okay, let me collect my thoughts for a second. I have multiple speculations on what the fuck is going on here. So, my first theory for the game's general plot is... You're someone that has found alien software which allows you to travel back in time, and are looking for ways to change the timeline to undo the damage done by an alien invasion. But initially, you're only able to warp back to 1995 through the body of an alien. Second theory, you're in 1995 and were somehow given access to this alien software. It allows you to explore the memories and the mind of an alien. This eventually leads you into the future. All of this was Astro Frog's elaborate plan to warn the humans about incoming danger without alerting whatever aliens were behind it. Third theory, and the most unlikely, you've been playing as an alien the entire time. You simply lost control of your ship and try your best to get back to it through exploration and time manipulation. I came to this theory simply based on the reactions of those frogs. So, I initially thought we'd never get a definitive answer to this game's story, cause while digging through the Frog Days forum posts, it quickly became evident that the developer was losing motivation to keep working on the game, mainly thanks to obscurity, the dread that only a handful of people will ever play the game. Truth be told, many of us cannot keep working on things just for the sake of it. It's less of fulfilling a creative need and more of a what's the point of talking if nobody's there to listen. For example, I'll probably stop making videos years down the line if my viewer base doesn't grow. So I sent out an email to the developer asking if my speculation on the story of Frog Days was at all correct. But I wasn't really expecting to get a response as the last time the dev posted anything out to the public was back in 2019. And then, you guessed it, I got an actual email response. In that response, I was told that my speculations are extremely close to the actual lore. Then, later, I got tons of tidbits on the game's overall lore. I'm not planning to reveal too much since it sounds like the developer is still hoping to complete it someday. Maybe on a frog day. Fucking kill I got to see some much more recent development progress, and I will share a small bit of the official lore. The aliens are able to morph into frogs, so that definitely explains the four frogs at the end. Plus some other ones you find through world exploration. That kind of implies that they have been watching you the entire time. Huh, now that I mention it, I've never been able to achieve true solace. I've always felt like I'm being watched, and not just by the government. I will. Oh, what's this grand old frog doing here? Well, there's no point in hiding it. My ugly DRG historian side was bound to break out any time now. I went through the effort of data mining and documenting each room of an unfinished game that nobody's heard of. This took me hours. Many hours. I've seen all there is to see about this build of the game. Don't worry, I'll try not to bore you too much. I won't literally cover everything. I'll just showcase the notable stuff for the video. But if you're interested in all of it, I've put up a link to my research notes in the description. Based pin, dazed then... whatever. Starting with this frog cave here with the music specific to this area. 
going back through the tunnel, you'll run into a blue screen. And that's about it. For this one, you start in a... festive trailer house? Exiting it leads directly into a carnival. There are a few sights to behold here, like the giant onions that pose a health risk. And... wait. That's it. Kind of. Here's something I dubbed as the void. This area seems to exist for testing purposes. You run into some really weird liquid guy that demands something shiny. I don't know if you can satisfy its request, but there you go. There's also a prototype for a scratch ticket, a pizza lobster, and... stuff. This one doesn't have its lighting finalized at all. It's entirely rendered in this quick preview mode, or whatever it's called. The world is indeed entirely made out of balloons. Aside from the random trees and planks. And the goop. The last area and a complete mystery is this one. No idea what the idea behind it is. Huh, I said idea twice. Consists of a hallway and that's it. Aside from entirely inaccessible locations, there's also an unfinished minigame for making lemonade. After digging through the game files, I figured you'd have to play these types of minigames to earn cash. Or even potentially gamble said cash with a slot machine. I was even able to fully translate the frog language by ripping the font files for them. Yeah, great. Like, there's much use for that. I experienced this weird screen with a strange robot voice. Uh, fun fact, this hello world thing seemingly keeps happening in random parts of the game. If you speak hello world in game, you'll get a response. One of the few lines that actually gives you a response if you use the talk feature. And there's also a hidden website for it on that alternate desktop. I hate to sound like goddamn Matt Pat or whatever, but it really feels like the dev wanted to have their own gaster type deal. You know that thing from Undertale? If the dev is watching this, I'm really sorry. I guess this makes it my second apology. And one last thing. A pretty small one. I found a two-frame animation of some naked dude pissing and flipping the bird. This is the part where I give some closing thoughts. In case it wasn't already obvious with how hard I data mined the game, I really enjoyed my time with it. Frog Days was definitely the type of game to grow on you over time. It'll leave a loud and messy impression that'll hopefully transform into a charming experience with a long-lost art style. It really feels like it's a genuine attempt to capture the awkward pre-rendered graphics of the 90s adventure games, and not just an obvious parody of it. Coupled with unique transitions, some nostalgic effects, and a wacky UI to complement the alien feel of Flamingo OS. If I had to criticize the game aside from how explosive the first few minutes are, I'd say that while it has many worlds to explore, most of these worlds are very shallow. Like, puddle deep shallow. Most of them really just have two dead end paths going for them with the occasional unique interaction or two the birthday world having the most of them. There's also a bunch of stuff I ran into thinking that they can be interacted with in some way. Maybe it's just quirks of an unfinished game. But there has to be a way to talk to this Anubis character. Or there must be a reason for why you can closely inspect this broken tricycle. But otherwise, that's about as much as I have to pick on it while respecting the stylistic decisions. I've recommended that you check it out, and I'll do it again. You gotta check it out if you're an explorative person. I'll give this game a... it's unfinished. I'm not gonna give it anything. I'm not gonna do that. I don't know if I'll even do that for exploring videos. Like, just check it out or not is good enough. Right? Oh yeah, if you wanna play anything similar to this, try the space bar. That has some similarities where you just kind of visit random alien brains and you get to experience like their worlds, but you have to actually solve insanely convoluted puzzles in that one because it's from that era.